Today we're going to be talking about the geological resources of Somalia and this is in partnership with Association of Somali Engineers. We are a UK-based organisation that is a platform for both students and professionals to collaborate, share ideas and to network and we aim to bolster levels of engineering awareness and employability within the community and to promote and develop engineering services and best practice for sustainable development. And today our speaker, Dr. Osman Salat Hirsi, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, he initially got his first geology degree from the Somali National University. After that, he had a scholarship to study at Florence University in Italy, where he gained his PhD. After a while, he went to Carlton University in Canada, where he got an, a second degree in side sedimentology and sedimentary basin analysis. Now he works at the University of Regina and he has over 200 papers in peer reviewed journals, book chapters, conference abstracts, open file reports, consultancy reports and, and institutional publications. Dr. Hirsi in his current role alongside his university is a consultant uh, for the petroleum industry in which he has worked with the Putland State of Somalia and the Federal Government of Somalia, in which he is still adamant to continue. Today's lecture will be held in, in English. However, we do hope that our future events we're able to uh, speak in Somali. So thank you, Dr. Osman, you can start. The hydrocarbons, hydrocarbons, the oil and gas. Is there petroleum in Somalia? The, the big question, yeah, if we have uh, petroleum here or not. If yes, where is it? And what's the obstacle hindering us to explore? So maybe this question is related to the hindrance. So I'll, I'll touch that uh, base later. Uh, but now I will talk about the possibility of, uh, of hydrocarbon potential and where do they occur. Again, uh, Somalia, lies at the center of a petroleum rich uh, region, yeah. We have the Arabia uh, Peninsula, which is producing close to 25% of world's uh, petroleum. The, this kind of Saudi Arabia, UAE, uh, Qatar, Bahrain, Iraq, uh, Oman, a bit of Yemen, not nowadays, even Iran, so those regions, they are producing about 25% of the world's uh, petroleum. And also in East Africa, there are discoveries in Tanzania, Kenya, and, and Mozambique as well. So a very good discovery here. So to so the north we have here, to the south we have here, to the west we have the Somali region under Ethiopian uh, administration here in the, in the west, the gas rich Ogaden Basin was called here. So we are surrounded by hydrocarbon rich regions. And in a very simple thinking, there's no reason that we do not have hydrocarbons, oil or gas, oil and gas, both. If you simply look that kind of a geographic location that we occur and we are surrounded by this, there's no reason that we, and geologically quite very similar similar to, to the Arabian side, Southern Arabian side, to the Kenyan side, to the uh, Ogaden region, we are, we are the same in terms of, uh, of geology. So there's no reason that we do not have hydrocarbon. Here is a, an extract from USGS 2015 publication. Here what they say, after, after decades operating the shadow of North and West Africa, East Africa is emerging as one of the most significant players in the Afri uh, African offshore oil and gas industry. Indeed, very uh, strong uh, statement. The discoveries in Tanzania and, and Mozambique and Kenya are indeed a big boost for the, uh, for the hydrocarbon industry of East Africa. What I would like here to share with you is that from this paper is that you see, they, in, in Mozambique and Tanzania alone, they discovered 250 trillion cubic feet of gas and 14.5 billion barrels of oil. And this report says that there were in, in about two years before 2015, so say 2013 and 14, they drilled in these two regions 27 wells. 
and 27 wells, 24 yield discovered. And that is success rate of 89%. It's extremely huge. In the oil industry, success rate of 10, 15% is, is, is wonderful. Imagine now, 89% discovery, 24 wells proved discovery relative to 27 wells that filled. Only three wells were dry. So that is underlining that this region is extremely, extremely important for the hydrocarbon industry. Uh, I will give you a very quick, uh, only this slide shows that um, the requirements, what are the conditions required for hydrocarbon oil and gas to accumulate? There are five conditions. If a region meets these five conditions, then it is highly potential for hydrocarbon. Number one is the existence of a source rock. Is there any source rock? And usually source rocks are defined as a organic rich sediments. Organic rich sediments. So we have, for instance, in the ocean, organisms are dying and buried. In the continent, usually less because of the oxidation uh, and therefore things become a decay and they disappear in most cases, unless it is in a, in a lake or, or in, in a in a coastal area where you have coastal swamps, where you can have uh, shales rich in uh, uh, coliferous and that kind of thing. But generally, most of source rocks form in underwater, either lake or, uh, or, or the oceans and, and seas. So that is the first prerequisite. If you have no source rock, then there's no oil. So, but that one is not enough. You need also to cook the hydrocarbon. Kind of when it is buried down, it's squeezed and the deeper you go, the hotter it gets. And that kind of cooks the organic matter. And that kind of cooking produces the organic matter transforms into oil and gas. So that kind of a transformation is indeed required. If it, you may hear mature and immature. If it doesn't reach to the point of generating oil and gas, then it is immature. It's still, you have the organic matter, the, what's called the, the kerogen, uh, these kind of uh, things are there. But you need to reach what's called the oil window. Once you reach the oil window, therefore, there will be a cracking into the oil and it's giving, it's giving uh, oil. If the pressure and then heat continues kind of a burial, then that oil may crack into gas. So usually we have formation of oil initially, uh, but if the heat continues more, it changes into gas. So both of them are the maturation process of the organic matter. Once that uh, maturation happens, then it has to migrate from the source rock and go into, uh, into a reservoir, uh, uh, apparently. If, if it migrates, it may come up to the surface and therefore you lose that if it comes to the surface. When it migrates, if there are faults or kind of a, uh, porous media that kind of takes it all the way to the surface, it, it disappears. But you need a trapping system. That trapping system is the seal and trap together. So you need to have some sort of a, of a trapping mechanism. There are different types, uh, stratigraphic traps, structural traps, different types of traps are, are there, diapeak tra traps. Uh, but here uh, is a very simplified one is the anticlinal uh, uh, trap. So here we have this kind of, uh, uh, the, the, this rock is impermeable and therefore hydrocarbons, when it goes, it, it does not, sorry, oops, sorry. so it does not, uh, it, it, it will be kind of staying here. So the gas is lighter than the oil and the oil is lighter than the water. So usually the water lies at the bottom and oil in the middle and gas above. And so you need a place where oil will accumulate and that's what's called the reservoir, a porous rock that can hold oil. So these are the five points, source rock, maturation, migration, seal and driving system and reservoirs. When we have that together, then we have a complete petroleum system. Yeah. So hydrocarbon, in, in, in sedimentary rocks of Somalia. 
First of all, what I would like to tell you, we, we have divided the, the rocks into the basement rocks that are old ones in Burhakawa and then and, and the Gulf range, and the rest is covered by sediment rocks. The hydrocarbons form in sediment rocks. They do not form in the igneous rocks, our metamorphic rocks. They do not. So we, we will not drill a well on Burhakawa to, 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 to look for oil. It's not there. So no waste of uh, money and time. But we need to drill where the sediment rocks are because that's where it forms, accumulates. There may be rare cases that sedimentary rocks that are adjacent with the igneous or metamorphic rocks that are fracturing. Therefore, the oil may ooze from the sediment rocks and fill into the fractures of the igneous and metamorphic rocks. But these are quite very rare. And actually, it occurs in Yemen. It's happening, uh, there's one case in, in Yemen. But generally, it's a, so. Almost all the hydrocarbons accumulate, form and accumulate in sediment rocks. And we said that over 85% or so, or even 90% of Somali territory is covered by sediment rocks. So from here, you can simply think that the potential for hydrocarbon may exist there, plus geographic locations so and so forth. So most of Somali territory covered by sediment rocks. These rocks are associated with fluids, oil, water, and gas can be there and can be preserved. Up to now, no hydrocarbon is expected to occur. Yeah, okay. And no, no hydrocarbon is expected to occur in the basement rocks, igneous and metamorphic. So Bur and, and Gold's Range, no go zone. And when I say Gold's Range, I'm not talking about basins that are present within. For instance, here, if you look, there's a Berbera basin, which is in between two basement uh, zones here, uh, north of Ergabo and here in the Hargeisa, Borama, that region. Yeah. So these are. This is a basin, so we can have hydrocarbon there. Yeah. So only we look at the sedimentary rocks. So we divide in a very simplified way the different types of basins: the Berbera Basin, Almado Basin, Muduk Basin, Bodisho or Koryole Basin, Mandera Lug Basin, Jubalamu Basin. So these are filled by sedimentary rocks. So here, if you look, we have the different basins: Berbera, Almado, Nugal, Sub Basin, Half Moon Margin here, Muduk Basin or Somali Embayment. Uh, Mogadishu Basin or Koryoli Basin, yeah, both names are, are used. Here's the Lugumandera, Jubalamu. So I'll, I'll, I'll go into uh, very quick each one. So I divide into three zones roughly. Yeah, the northern basins, the central basin, and the southern basins. Yeah, the paleogeographic map of the world during the late Cretaceous time. So this is what I'm about. 94 million years ago. Here, if you look, we have Arabia and Africa that were attached together. They were, we are one, one block together. That means that we are geologically, at least at another part of the country, it's geologically very similar to Southern Arabia. Yemen, Southern part of Southern Arabia, Oman, that region, we have very similar geology. And these are the regions that are producing hydrocarbons and geologically very similar, and therefore the, that you, you can think about that some sort of, of a similarity there. So this kind of uh, light uh, blue or purple, that is the shallow shelf that was depositing certain kind of, uh, of sediments. So Somali here and Arabia is there. So during the rifting, there was the sedimentary basins that were formed. And here, if you look, the Arabia and Africa were attached together. The Red Sea Gulf did not exist in those days in the Cretaceous time. And there are these different kinds of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, basins, or And these basins here, a uh, small one in Yemen. So this is the Yemeni side. We have what's called the Adahli Basin, a small basin, Gorama Basin, which is associated, linked into that one. Here we have uh, Ma'arib Hajar Basin, which is producing a good amount of hydrocarbon or use it before the, their civil war. This is becomes the larger southward and, and joins into the Berbera Basin. And that Berbera Basin also goes into the Nugal Rift and so on and so forth. Here, the Sayoun al masira Basin, it's another big pro, uh, producer of uh, hydrocarbon, and that's well linked into the al Basin. And that al Basin continues into in the Indian Ocean, it continues into there. There's the Jezagamar Basin, which is partly in Yemen, partly in Oman, and that continues into a basin between Alula and Sokotra. So we have portion of that, of that basin as well. 
So these are the sedimentary basins in the northern parts of the country. And they are well associated and akin with basins that are known to be hydrocarbon producers. Um, here uh, is a, what's called the stratigraphy of, uh, of the region yeah, from the Hintula area. Yeah, here we have the different types of, uh, of uh, sedimentary succession. And here, if you look at these kind of uh, uh, letters, R stands to potential reservoirs, because remember, you need to have a source rock and, and potential reservoir and also cap rocks, the, the traveling mechanism. So we do have all types of, of rocks here. Potential for the C is the cap rocks, for the S is a potential source rock, and for the R is for the potential reservoirs. So we have here this system. Here's the Yosemite sandstone is quite very thick, about 1700 meters thick, very thick. And it's very wonderful uh, uh, sandstone, fluvial sandstone with some kind of, that's where the coal uh, occurs. And it could be very wonderful reservoir uh, in, in the subsurface. Not if it's exposed or not, but in the subsurface, it's quite beautiful. And also the other limestones, the Gowan limestone. These shales, the Gaho, the shale and the Ghana shales, these are hot shales that could be very good source rocks. Yeah, these carbonates can also contain uh, source rocks and maybe some reservoirs could be present there. Yeah, the Gerat sandstone, the oldest one, is a, a potential reservoir uh, and, uh, and, and also there could be some source rocks. There's certain kind of, uh, of, of, of shales that are present within, within it. Here again uh, is the structural and stratigraphic cross section of the Dagashabel area. Dagashabel is this area. So there's this kind of cross section south. There's a well that has been drilled in the Dagashabel. It went all the way to the basement rocks. This is the basement rocks. And here are the different kind of geologic uh, units that are present there. So this is the Salmon sandstone. And these are the carbonates that are present there. Here, what's important is you see the structure of the faults that are present there, and that kind of a tilting of different types of rocks. This generates what's called the trapping mechanism, uh, fault controlled uh, uh, trapping system, and also the juxtaposition of shales that can be cap rocks and the sandstone. Here, you see the adequate sandstone, here's the shale. These shales can be hot and uh, source rocks, and they can ooze their hydrocarbon into adequate sandstone or into the Bechin formation. And, and therefore, it, it doesn't move because it is also seals there. So it can be present in there or in these carbonates. So we can have this kind of a, a juxtaposition of different types of, of rocks. In the Almelo area, we have also uh, the source rocks and the reservoirs, as well as the cap rocks. This is the stratigraphy in the north. Here we have a different types of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of formations, Adigrat sandstone. But then to the east, we have the, uh, more of a carbonate dominated, there's no sandstone. But here farther east into the, uh, into the Sagahle, close to the, to, the, to the margin, we have mainly shales, very thick shales, say yeah, Marek shales, Warandab shales, Jira shales, and Sagala shales. These shales can be very good potential source rocks. And if we have sourced, therefore they can leak their hydrocarbons into these potential reservoirs and, and cap rocks as well. So highly attractive here. Yeah. Yeah, the structure, this is offshore of, of, of Las uh, There are two wells that were drilled in offshore Las One is called Dabkua, the other one is called, uh, uh, yeah, it has a name, Dabkua, and uh, it will come. Anyway, uh, so there's a well drilled. You see all these structures, these lines are faults and structures, and these can generate very good uh, trapping mechanisms. So there's no shortage of structures. The geology is there, the potential, Rocks are there, the cap rocks are there, the structure is there. It's indeed very, very attractive. It requires more of a exploration. Yeah, so yeah, the other well is Bandar Harsha near, uh, near uh, Las Pole. So Bandar Harsha and, and the Pua, these are the two wells. So this is the well called the Bandar Harsha. It reaches all the way to the Jurassic. The yeah, Jurassic, Cretaceous, and the young rocks are there. The Oligomycin is there. and. Here you see the structure, these kind of faults, these lines are, are faults that are kind of displacing. And that displacement is very important from one side, it puts together the different types of, of rocks, cap rocks against reservoirs and so on and so forth to preserve the hydrocarbon. The other one is that they may create certain kind of uh, anticline faults. So once here we have this kind of uh, anticlinal 
uh, surface, and that's where they drilled the well. The well. So here in the Nugal area, there's this kind of Nugal rift, potential stratigraphic traps. So this is a cross section from Conoco. It's an unpublished report. And you can see also still, we have lots of faults and juxtaposition of different types of rocks. We have this kind of a proud anticlines and synclines. So this can be very good potential uh, trapping mechanism and also uh, source rocks and uh, and, uh, and potential reservoirs are there in, in, in this region as well. Yeah, here shows the different wells that have drilled in the northern part of, 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 of Somalia and the, their potential uh, in terms of uh, hydrocarbon. So those that are colored, these are those that are showing oil and gas shows. So for instance, here the Hashabel has very good oil and gas shows. And actually they thought initially that it was discovered but then when they tested it, it did not continue to produce hydrocarbon, but there was a, a good certain amount of, uh, of hydrocarbon that has been extracted from there. And Bandar Harsho is this one, and the Bukua is this one. They, are, they have showed very good oil and, and gas shows. Derin near uh, south of uh, Baran uh, is there as well. Uh, Sagale and, and Cotton or Cotton is in this region. Uh, near Bandar Bayla area, and also seven and eight. These are the two most recent wells drilled in the Daror Valley. So uh, Shabel one and Shabel two was called in the Daror Valley, drilled in 2012. And um, they have very good oil and gas shows as well. Yeah. And here in the Nugal Rift, we have here two wells drilled here. One is the Kalis one, uh, number nine, and the Nugal one, number 10. So they have also very good oil uh, oil and gas shows as well. Yeah. So the important thing of the oil and gas shows is telling us that the petroleum system exists. The petroleum system exists. The question is, where did it accumulate in a, in a commercial uh, amount, com a commercially viable amount? That's the question. And that's the job of the explorers to ex explore more. Actually, just if, if you look at these kind of wells, I didn't count, but they may be in the range of 10, 15 wells altogether, if you put together. And that's almost nothing compared to a region, which is maybe uh, as great as uh, uh, half of the, of the country, more or less, if you, if you put together, yeah. And... Uh, come on. I just yeah. wanted to ask, um, how long is left? Because I'm just cautious of time. Okay. Um, maybe uh, another... 10, 15 minutes. Okay, no problem. Just okay. wanted to allow enough time for questions. Okay, okay, great. So the second uh, one is the central uh, basin, uh, the Muduk Basin, what's called. This is the largest basin in the country, very large. It covers Muduk and uh, Galgudud, Hiran, and part of uh, Shabel, middle Shabel. So it is quite very large. And it continues into the Ogaden Basin. It's the same geology, the same continuation of the same basin. So basically they form the same kind of a basin. Their geology here, the, the Ogaden Basin, they uh, kind of uh, identified four, uh, four trillion cubic uh, feet of gas. Four trillion cubic feet of gas in, in, in that region. And that's what has been simply uh, identified that could be more uh, to be discovered. So the Mutuk Basin is very similar to Ogaden Basin and therefore it must have the same potential of the, of the Ogaden Basin. Here again in the Eastern Mutuk Basin, we have the source rocks that are present there and this uplifted zone, we have the potential reservoirs and cap rocks. So highly potential zone is, is there. So similar, similar things that this shales will produce hydrocarbons and it will migrate up section and fill these potential uh, reservoirs. In the southern part, we have the three uh, basins, the Mogadishu Basin, Mandera Basin, Lug Mandera Basin, and Jubalam Basin. Here, starting with the Mandera Lug Basin, the yeah, next slide will be here. So there are two margins. Here's the Bur region is here, and here's also another crystalline rocks in the uh, in the NFD side of, uh, of the border. Yeah, here we have that one. So we have this basin in the, in the, in the middle. 
So this is a cross section that's showing there. Here is the is the Kenya. In Somalia, we have the whole well, one well that has been drilled. And actually, the, all the sedimentary rocks, the Karu clusters are present here, overlain by the Adigrat. So we have potential reservoirs, potential source rocks. This is the Mereg shales. We have evaporites. And evaporites are very wonderful, very nice uh, cap rocks. They do not allow hydrocarbons to migrate. And therefore, uh, any hydrocarbon produced here, they can be accumulating into these Adigrat sandstones. They can accumulate. Yeah. And here we have the Hamenley. Here we have another Warandab, another potential source rock that can uh, feed the Hamenley carbonates. Here again, the oil shows and sieves are known to occur in the region. So here is a, is a well drilled in the uh, western side of the border, and it has very good oil and gas shows. There are also oil sieves that are present in the, in the region. Mogadishu Basin, yeah, so the cross section will be shown there. And here it is. We have the Burhakaba uplift, so no hydrocarbon in the Burhakaba area, but here we have this kind of a deeply uh, kind of a buried uh, tertiary rocks. We have the Hamenley here, the Jurassic, and the Jira, the, the Cretaceous is here as well. So we do have this one. So two wells, the Dubai well and Afgoya well is there. Excellent oil and gas shows in Koryole and Afgoya wells. So these have very good and favorable structural types are there as well. So very nice and very beautiful uh, data is there. And uh, the possibility of having hydrocarbon is quite very high. The last basin is the Jubalama Basin in the southern part of the country. And that is uh, in, into the uh, NFT side of the, uh, of the border. It continues into there. So here is a, is a cross section. Obi well uh, and Jamama well. Here's the, the Kenyan side, the Marani well drilled in the Kenyan side. Here, the brow, see there's the uplifting. So that is the uh, kind of containing the uh, Jubalamu basin is, is there, yeah. So these are what's called the diapiric uh, uh, kind of a movements, salt movements that are present there. And these can generate very nice uh, stratigraphic traps, uh, uh, traps, uh, diapiric traps, what's called, yeah. So quite very, very attractive. And here is also another kind of a seismic section showing these kind of structures uh, that are showing the uh, potential uh, kind of a traveling system. So all the appears in an offshore southeast. And next slide showing here, so you kind of close up view showing these kind of a, of a diapiric uh, movements. So this could be very good. I would drill my well here and maybe another well here. These are the structures that allow you to, to drill. And also, yeah, wells drilled in the Jubilamo Basin have oil shows, both offshore and onshore. So here, these are mainly drilled in the Kenyan side. Uh, here we have the oil and gas oil shows and, and gas shows. So this is the legend, gas shows and oil shows. Here we have these, these ones as well, yeah. Okay, and I think, yeah. Uh, a few last slides here. We have the uh, the work done by Spectrum. They have done 2D seismic data of 20,500 kilometers seismic, quite very good amount of, of work. These are the lines of their seismic. And these are the different blocks that have been divided into, into, into the country. And they have shown very nice, beautiful seismic profiles that are showing the internal structure of the, of the, of the, of the subsurface. And here is one of them, it's extensional tectonics. See these kind of faults are forming there. So these kind of extensional tectonics and these blocks that are kind of rotated with, with these kind of listric faults, what's called, these can generate very nice uh, uh, trapping mechanism and also putting together potential source rocks with, with the potential reservoirs. Uh, there are also, uh, uh, more kind of a deeper basins in the ocean. And what's called deep basin, the only basin here, they call it deeper one, Hobia basin, and also here in the south. So there are more basins that have been discovered in the offshore based on the data by spectra. Yeah, so now the hindrance. What is the obstacle of not benefiting from our natural resources? I think you have now some idea about how potential we are in terms of minerals, and hydrocarbon, and the water resources, rock resources. 
but why, what's, what's the major reason that we are not getting uh, benefit of these things? There are two major obstacles, I would say. One is the lack of political stability. Uh, the mother or father of all. <laughs> yeah, it's, it doesn't. I, I would divide here into two eras, the pre-collapse time before 1990 and after 1990. The pre-collapse time uh, before 1990, we were somehow dwindling between East and West. Politically, we were not that much stable. We were one time with the Soviets and Eastern Bloc and then uh, later here. So some sort of uh, insecurity for the oil industry and most of the oil industry that are working in the regions are the Western companies. And so there was lack of, uh, of a confidence. And also, if you know, the earliest uh, days of the, of the military rule, they, they kind of uh, nationalized it, if you think so, that has created uh, a, a, an obstacle for the companies to come up. Some uh, contracts have been done, some kind of wells were drilled, but not as, as much as it, 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 it should be. So that has, uh, I would say, suppressed the interest of the exploration companies. The post-collapse time uh, after 1990, I think everyone knows what's, what happened. Lack of security since the collapse of the central government. So there's no security, kind of a, whether I call it civil war or insecurity or warlordism, whatever it is, that has hindered any kind of a, of a work. The other one is also litigation between the federal government and the member states. Uh, we know that there's a big litigation between them and also incomplete uh, petroleum and mineral exploration and production laws. The, the laws that govern the petroleum and mineral exploration, they have kind of uh, ratified things, but still some uh, states are, are saying, no, we do not accept ratification. So that requires a very settled uh, law that is applicable to the, uh, to, to, to the whole country and that the oil companies can, can use. So these are kind of a political instability in general. I put that together. The other one is the shortage of professionals. Yeah, they know how people, Somalis, who can, can work there. Most of the pre-civil war professionals are either dead or retired or maybe out of the country to some extent, yeah. Uh, it, it's my group and older, <laughs> basically, I would say. Yeah, so that's what happened. Uh, some people died, Allah uh, and others are retired and so on and so forth. So that's one thing. Most of the post-civil war professionals are out of the country and have less incentive to return. That is another thing yeah, as well. And actually, most of these uh, professionals that are out of the country, I would say extreme majority of them are younger uh, kind of uh, people who came to the uh, outside uh, since the civil war. So either they were born outside in, in their country in Europe and North America, or they became as, as kids and children and maybe less than 10 years. And so now they are those who are uh, kind of knowledgeable for different kinds of fields. But do they have the gut to go back to Somalia? Do they feel they are Somalis? I hope so. But that is, we need uh, a, a situation that we can benefit from the uh, knowledge of our younger uh, kind of uh, offsprings who are out in the, in the country to come back and, 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 and work uh, in our country. But that requires, of course, political stability and, and kind of a, a system that is willing to advance the, 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 the important natural resources of the, of the country. Well, in conclusion, I would say no shortage of natural resources. What resources? Despite relative shortage of precipitation, the country has enormous quantity of groundwater. So we need to tap this groundwater. We need to, to exploit the, this groundwater, number one. So there's no shortage of them, but we need to have uh, dams and water in Los Amelio, in Petrana Dams, Cas Los that's what we need in an extensive way. The mineral and rock resources, there are economically viable minerals and rocks that are known. Others, uh, traces are uh, required further exploration. So yes, whether it is the, the different types of minerals, uh, the, the tin and, uh, and then zinc and lead and, and so forth. So there, there are uh, 
gold. Uh, actually, there's this kind of a, a gold rush in, in the northern part of, of, of Somalia that people are kind of exploiting. So it's a, it requires more of a, a exploiting, uh, explorative approach and instead of uh, simply uh, going these people kind of uh, digging here and there and kind of uh, uh, head and tail uh, kind of way. Hydrocarbons, oil and gas shows and oil seeps in the country are known and they underscore the existence of a functioning petroleum system, indeed. So extensive hydrocarbon exploration is well needed. So in summary, favorable geology, indeed, yes, we do have favorable geology in every aspect of the natural, geological natural sources. We need to add that one, political stability. When we have these two, then we'll have successful exploration and exploitation and business. Are we politically stable? You judge it. And add that one into the, the tug of war between the federal government and the, and the federal member states. These are kind of a, a, another layer of a problem and inshallah, it will finish soon.